does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today, I'm very excited to be checking out Dragon Slayer, the dice game with a twist from Indie Board and Cards. This is for two to five or six players. Take about 15 minutes to play, I'd say it's for ages uh, six, seven, and up. It's a very, very simple game. And in Dragon Slayer, you will be chucking dice, trying to slay dragons, trying to push your luck and be the first person to get 40 points. It was released this year, right before Gen Con. It had a successful Kickstarter, but is the game good? Let's open it up and see how it works. All right, then. We're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Dragon Slayer, the dice game with a twist on our handy-dandy grip mat, which turns every game into a space game. So first and foremost, you're going to get your handy-dandy rule sheet, which is one page, double-sided, full color, and it's not very well done. Uh, for how small this rule sheet is... I couldn't figure out how to play the game exactly until I got the to the example of play. And part of that is because it's weirdly worded. It says put things on top of the box, but in actuality they mean on top of this thing. And I don't know exactly what was going on here. It feels like this wasn't put through a blind play test. And um, just not a very well done rule booklet for how small the rule booklet is and for how simple the game is. So a very rare thumbs down on this rule booklet. So in this game what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking control of one of these guys who's going to be trying to slay dragons and gain 40 points in order to win the game. So each person is going to get one of these little standees. They don't actually stand, but they're just going to help represent your color. Now, uh, it says it's two to five players, but you get enough for the contents for six players in the game. Six cubes, six of these guys, uh, six of the challenge tokens. I'm assuming that was a Kickstarter stretch goal or something like that, because this was on Kickstarter. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So you're going to get one of these and it's going to have a corresponding cube, which you're going to be keeping track of how many points you have. You're also going to get a challenge token. These are going to allow you to challenge someone to continue dragon hunting, even if they, they were planning on stopping. And essentially you're trying to figure out the right time to use those challenge tokens to optimize your points. But be wary, if someone accepts your challenge and passes your challenge, they're going to get a lot more points. So you really need to figure out when you want to use that at the proper time. Uh, next over here, you're going to get this little thing where you're going to be putting your dice to represent how many points you're going to get on a turn. And it looks kind of confusing, but we'll get to how it works uh, in a couple minutes. Let me tell you, everything in this game is super simple. Uh, now, the gameplay tells you to put it on top of the box. Oh, such a shiny box. Uh, but I think they actually mean to put it on top of this. I don't know. That's one of the issues I had with the rule booklet. But let's get to the shards of the show. It is called Dragon Slayer the Dice Game. So the dice obviously need to be top quality and they are top quality. They're very nicely made cool looking custom dice. So let's go over what you're going to get on the dice and then we'll go into the gameplay. So first you're going to have your warrior dice on these. You're going to have axes which you're going to need at least one of those to slay a dragon. You're going to have shields which you're going to use to prevent uh, fire breathing because dragons, well they breathe fire. And then you're going to have fire which will breathe on you. And if you have too many fire coming at you then you're going to lose your dice which makes hunting dragons really really difficult. So those are going to be on the warrior dice. Next you're going to have three colors of dice. And if you're familiar with zombie dice, these should look somewhat familiar. So how this is going to work are blue are easy, green are medium, and red are hard. I thought that was an interesting choice to have green being medium, but that's neither here nor there. And on these dice you're going to see a couple things. First you're going to see mountains. And mountains just mean that the, the dragon has flown away. So that's, uh, that's all that means. That means you're going to end up re-rolling this die. Next you're going to see heads. In order to slay a dragon, you're going to need the head of a dragon, you're going to need the wings of a dragon, and you're going to need the tail of the dragon. And then you're also going to need an axe, but if you can do that successfully, this would gain you two points at the end of this round, if you stop when you should stop. The, if you can do that for the medium, you'll get four points, and if you can do that for the hard red dragon, you're going to gain six points. So those are the dice you're going to get in the game. Those are all the different symbols that you're going to see. So let's get into a mock hand so we can see exactly how the game is played. It's a pretty simple game. Uh, the first player is going to decide which of the three dragons they would like to slay first. So for this one, we'll say we're going to start off with the easy blue dragon. We'll roll up our dice. And let's see. We got a tail, which means we'll set the tail over here. 
Uh, so we know we got that. We also got a fire breath, but no biggie because we also got uh, a shield to block that and two shields in fact. So we're going to put those all over here on the re-roll side. Uh, over here, so we're going to re-roll those. A mountain, which means we're going to re-roll that one. And then we also were able to get the head of the dragon. So we put that right here. And so we'll roll again and see what we get. All right, we got exactly what we needed. We got the wings and we got the axe. We have no fire coming at it, so we are good there. Which means we have successfully slayed this dragon. Woohoo! We have earned two points. So we're going to put this two-pointer up here to represent that we have, in fact, successfully gotten two points. And we get to keep all three of our warrior dice because we were able to uh, complete that. And then we're going to decide, do we want to continue to go or do we want to stop right now and just take our two points? So if we continue to go, we're going to move on to the next dragon. But in order to show you how the challenge tokens work, we're going to say, all right, you know what? I, I'm done. I'm going to stop. I'm going to be happy with my two points. So now everyone else is going to have the chance to challenge you. Uh, and only one person per turn can do that. I believe it goes counterclockwise, so if, if this guy hunted the dragon, then this guy would get the chance to challenge him first and back around to him. And what that means is you're essentially going to throw this on the board and say, I challenge you. And you have a couple options when someone challenges you. So essentially they're saying you need to go back out there and slay at least one more dragon. Now you get to pick the dragon, so you could go with the medium dragon, but that's neither here nor there. So if you don't take their challenge, your turn ends, and you only get half the points that you earn that turn. So for instance, if you only got, uh, you know, you were getting two points, you say, I'm not going to take your challenge, you would only get one point that round, and then the challenger is going to get five points. So let's say Red challenged you and you chickened out, and they would, boom, just get five points for doing nothing aside from playing this coin, and they don't get the coin back, uh, which I don't believe is in the rules either. I just assume they don't get it back. So, if you decide to continue the hunt, this is where you can get big points. You must defeat at least one more dragon, as I mentioned. However, at the end, if you can successfully come kill another dragon right there, you're going to gain double points for each dragon you slay. So instead of getting, you know, six points, this would be worth 12 points to you, which means, boom, you're going to get a lot of points. If you continue and fail, then your opponent, once again, is going to get five points. And that's how the challenge token works. Um, anywho, you're going to continue chucking dice, challenging things, and the only way you can lose is if, you run, if you're not going to be able to do something because you run out of these dice. Now, uh, I should have probably shown you an example of that. So essentially, let's just say you roll this and you roll uh, three axes. Well, this is bad luck because you have a fire and you cannot block the fire, which is super bad because if you have more fire breaths than you have uh, shields, you're going to lose one of your die for each undefended fire breath. So now you would lose this die, you're not going to get it back, and you would have to roll again. So let's just say we did this and pretend that this happened. Oh no, we got two fire breaths and no shields, that would mean you'd lose both these dies, and your turn would be over, the dragon would have slain you, and you get zero points, because it is a push your luck game. But that, in a nutshell, is how Dragon Slayer, the dice game with a twist, is played. Oh, great dopery! Dragon Slayer, the dice game with a twist from Indie Board and Cards. One of my final thoughts. Let's go to the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the pro side, uh, you know, the game is very, very nicely made. Uh, I mean, component wise, top notch, box, nice and shiny. Uh, the dice, very, very nice looking dice. And, and even in addition, they throw in enough uh, contents for six players to play, even though the box only says five players. So that's a really cool added extra surprise. Also, I like the box size, I like the nice compact box size. Uh, Component-wise, uh, just top-notch components from Indie Board and Cards. Also, it is your typical push-your-luck dice game, but I do feel like the challenge token adds a unique little twist that I'd like to see implemented in uh, some other games. I, I kind of like the, the fact that even when it's not your turn, you still do have that interaction because you can say, oh, you think you're done? Well, here you go. I'm going to challenge you to keep on going. Um, that's interesting. Uh, I do want to mention, I mentioned the bad rule booklet, uh, but I want to say that's just because I come to expect a lot from Indie Board and Cards. They're one of my favorite game companies, you know, Haggis, Coup, The Resistance, Flashpoint, Fire Rescue. I love a lot of their games, and they're actually one of those rare companies that it's pretty much just an insta-buy. When they have something on Kickstarter, they have a new project, I just back it because I love their games so much. So essentially, the rule booklet is not broken but it's, it's definitely just not what I expected from a company that, that normally puts out really well done rule booklets and games and top notch stuff. Um, that's about all I got for the pros. Moving on to, to the cons. Wow. I picked this up at Gen Con. 
and I was ex I was excited. I love dice games. I really I love dice games. I have an entire shelf over there that is just dice games. That's how much I enjoy them. I was like, oh, this will be a nice, fun little dice games, two to five players. Well, two to six players. Uh, it was you know successful on Kickstarter. I think it was on Kickstarter, and I brought it home and I played with my wife, and I was super excited, and we were like, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll try more players. We played with four players, and it's like, yeah. We tried with six players, and it's like, yeah. And uh, we played it. We played it a couple more times, and each and every time, it's it's a dud. This is a complete and utter dud. I can't recommend this game at all. Flat. First and foremost, let's just get that out of the way. This is not a good game, and this is one of those rare games that I'm actually not going to keep it. Normally, I keep games and I, I play them and I say, "All right, I'll play it with my son when he gets older," or I'll play it in this situation or that situation. I have a situation for every game. I'm looking at like the farming game, Castle Risk, Are You Afraid of the Dark, that are on my collection, have maintained a spot on my collection, and this game is not going to be on my in my collection. It's just not a good game, and, and there's a couple different reasons why. First and foremost. The game is borderline broken with the challenge system. Um, so what what happens is you can you can continue to keep going and going and going. But the problem with that is so let's just say you get the red dragon, the blue dragon, the green dragon. You're doing really well. You got two dice left, and you continue to push on. And you get the blue dragon, and you slay. You're now sitting at uh, what is it? 14 points. So you say you know what? I'm going to stop. I got 14 points. Well, someone challenges you, and they say, "Hey, challenge," and you say, "Oh." Okay, I'll go for the Red Dragon. Let's go for the Gusto. That's going to put you at 20 points if you can successfully do that. However, your points are double, which means, and this happened, I'm not just making this up as a hypothetical, this actually happened, someone is going to score 40 points. They have the potential to score 40 points in the first round. This happened to be the second player in a five-player game who scored 40 points and won the game. Uh, they just won the game. Nobody else was able to get 40 points. And it, it's just, that's... That's a slight problem when someone can win a game on the first turn. Um, other than that, I mean, it just wasn't fun. It was just boring. I mean, there is interaction because, you know, you can interact with other people and challenge them. But for the most part, people are just rolling dice now. Yeah. Oh, you can't do that. You don't have the app. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Okay. That's it. That's the game. And if you play it with six players, dear God, I will never play it with six players again. Because it's just so little interaction. And this this doesn't bug me in some other light dice games. Like, I have Dungeon Roll, and I enjoy Dungeon Roll. This is just not a good game. Dragon Slayer, the dice game with a twist. This is not a good game. I do not recommend this to anyone unless you are an absolute completionist. Uh, just complete death from indie board and cards. Hopefully the next one they put out will be a lot better. If you enjoyed this review, though, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. Also, in the comments below, let me know what was the game that you were super excited to play and then you got it and it was not fun. And you're like, I expected so much and got so little. Because uh, I like to know those stories. I love those stories because it, it, it happens to everybody and it's so terribly disappointing and we need to form... We need to get a focus group where we can talk about it. Uh, but if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to... Um, oh, just thanks for your time, you two. That was the review for Dragon Slayer. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. Whew. Glad that one's over. Which game shelf am I going to? Up here? No, oh, no, no, oh, yeah. We're going over the dice section over here, right? In that... Oh, wait, no, wait, where are we going? Hey, where Where am I go I'm. I'm not in the review pile. Where? Oh, we're going over here to the games that don't get played that much, right? Wait, no, where? Wait, no, no, this isn't. This isn't where the games go. No, this is. This is. No, not the claws of death. No, no, you don't. You don't want to put me in there. No, 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 no. No, you have candy land in there and the livestock uprising and apples down. No, no, no. Dragon, the the name of that game, which eludes me right now, was never seen again. This does not happen very often. If you follow my channel, you know I'm an overly enthusiastic game reviewer. I love games. I love playing games. I love rolling dice. I love doing card things.